Hello everyone! Welcome to this video where I'm going to um, make some food inspired by, loosely inspired by, a show that I recently watched, Fiona and Cake. If you've never heard of Fiona and Cake, it's a spin-off of Adventure Time. We all know Adventure Time, come on, we all loved it. Um, I think you can still enjoy this video if you've never seen the show, because I'm really just making some food, you know. Disclaimer, I'm not going to show any like big spoilers or anything, but there will be clips from the show, so if you really don't want to see anything, go away. And I, you know, I'm no Binging with Babish or any of those channels that do like accurately recreating things from movies and shows, you know? This is just like, oh, when you're like watching a show, and they make pasta and you're like, oh my gosh, I want pasta now, you know? Just like inspired by, okay? Because I like to cook, I like to bake sometimes, but naturally I'm very lazy. So I will eat like the same three things over and over and like never cook unless I force myself to. So this is one way that I'm forcing myself to. It was a good show and I made some good food. Most of it was good. Most of it that I made was good. So anyways, let's move on to the video. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you for clicking. So you guys know that I always like to work in fun little bevies to any kind of theme that I'm going off of, you know? I always want to find a way I can like make a themed beverage. There's a lot of coffee references in the show. A lot of characters drink coffee. Actually, it's mostly Fiona getting coffee from Gary at the bu Butterscotch Buttery Buns Bakery, whatever it's called. One coffee to go! Please. But she kind of just orders like regular iced coffee. Even there's a part where she asks Gary to give her a frozen triple shot latte would be nice. And when I heard that in the show, I was like, oh, I can make like a blended, like a frap kind of thing, you know? But then when I looked closer to the video, it's literally just an iced coffee. Um, so yeah, I was like, that's kind of boring. And then like Simon and Finn make like campfire coffee or cowboy coffee. It's a secret to cowboy coffee. So that's what cowboy tastes like. But then I remembered that Cinnamon Bun's like gender bent counterpart in Fiona's world orders like six butterscotch lattes in the very beginning of the show. Order for CB, six butterscotch lattes and three dozen cream puffs. Oh, thank you. Gary, I know it was quite a tall order, but my grandkids just love these little coffee drinks. Just kidding! They're all for me! They don't even show them, but just like hearing about a butterscotch latte, I was like, that's interesting. I've never had that before. I don't even know if I've ever made or had any like vegan butterscotch flavored anything. Yeah, so I thought I should make a butterscotch sauce, then I can make coffees with it, and I can also use it for other things. I had some green apples dipped in it, and that was good. Um, it was really easy to make and it was like made out of stuff that I already have. It's super rich. Also, I don't really drink hot coffee, so I did only put it in iced coffees. Like I said, I'm not accurately recreating things from the show, just getting ideas for trying new things from the show. Anyways, it has a really good flavor. I like that it's salty, you know? I don't really know if I'd make it again, honestly, not because I didn't like it, but because if I was gonna make a sauce, I'd probably just make like a caramel sauce instead or even like a chocolate sauce. Butterscotch is just not really my like number one favorite flavor. It's a lot thicker now. Look at that, it's thick. I just want it to like drizzle down the sides but like in an aesthetic way, not in an ugly way. Walmart oat milk. We love it, we love it. Careful Emily, careful Emily, careful Emily, careful Emily. Careful, Emily. Oh my god. So the other day, I made a coffee drink with the butterscotch sauce that was more like fall pumpkin spice inspired. Butterscotch maple pumpkin spice latte. So I put some of my butterscotch sauce, maple syrup, pumpkin spice, cinnamon because I like extra cinnamon, some oat milk. Oh. Yum. Come on, Scrabby, let's make a deal. I can get you anything you want. A new ride, big dung ball. Ah, not my hot and spicy. You just handed me the only thing I want. 
My pickles? The time room! They've referenced Prismo's pickles like many times during the OG Adventure Time series. And every time they mention it, it makes me want pickles. But anyways, in the Fiona and Cake show, I thought it was really cute that they actually showed his like pickles. Like, well, they don't show him like making them, which that's a whole thing because he's like, t um, like two dimensional, one dimensional. How does he make them? I don't know. But they show his like inventory of pickles, his um, artisanal pickles store, catalog, um, inventory, storage. I don't know. But I just, you know, getting a little tiny bit more insight into the Prismos pickles lore is fun for me. They're literally just like little drawings, but why do they look so good? Like they make me want pickles every time. I've I realized I've never made pickles before. I've made pickled onions, and that's probably the only pickled thing I've made, but I've never made pickle pickles, pickled cucumbers. So I was really excited to make them. And only because they actually reference the hot and spicy pickles in the show, I wanted to make hot and spicy pickles. Um, so like the first pickle recipe that came up when I typed in spicy pickles, um, I made and it was delicious. I made one that was as spicy as the recipe called for and then because I had no idea how spicy that would be, I also made a mild one. The spicy one, I've never had like that spicy of a pickle before. I'm, I like pickles, but I'm not really like a pickle connoisseur, okay? And the combination of the super vinegary pickle with also like very spicy to me, white girl spicy, um, really, it just feels like it's like itching your mouth, you know, like it's just tingling in there. Extra, it's like the McDonald's Sprite experience of a pickle, you know? These were delicious. I definitely want to keep making pickles. I also, in the show, they use, they, he makes like full pickles, a full cucumber, you know, like not, like the cucumber is not cut. <laughs> and I wanted to do pickles like that to look more like the show, but again, like to be more like realistic for what I would actually want, I ended up cutting them because I was like, I'm not really someone that's going to eat like a whole pickle like that. Um, so this is better for me. This is more practical for me, like having like spears, you know, I can have more pickles. Okay. Oh, I also, instead of like mincing the onion, I left it in like, um, what's it called? Slices, I guess. So that when I'm done with all the pickles, I can fish those out and put them in sandwiches and stuff like little pickled onions, right? That's smart, right? I'm gonna try a pickle. Hot and spicy pickle. Mmm. It is spicy. They're also really sour. Mild pickle. Oh yeah, these are definitely mild. Got pickle in the fridge. Ugh. Pickles. This is for the dumbbell. So the next thing is not really something that they have in the show. But in the first episode's like intro, Fiona's little song, you know, I'm not really feeling like myself today. I'm not really feeling like myself today. Hey. There's just a short clip of Fiona and Cake sharing a giant bowl of spaghetti and meatballs with like little basil leaves sprinkled on top. I'm assuming it's basil. They kind of honestly look like pumpkin seeds. Whenever I would see that little clip, it just looks so good and I wanted to make spaghetti and meatballs. And I realized, uh, again, it, like, do I not cook enough? Yes, this is the truth, I don't cook enough. But it's making me realize like all these things that are common, but I've never made them before myself, you know? I never made vegan meatballs myself. That's not true. I made vegan meatballs once with my mom, but they weren't for spaghetti. <laughs> They're for something else. They were like barbecue meatballs. This is too much information. Anyways, I made some meatballs. You know, people put like breadcrumbs or crackers or whatever in meatballs, but I actually had some like stale bread. Like, you know, the butt pieces of the bread that are all like not the right size. Wait. Okay, when you get like a round loaf of bread and the butt pieces, they're like too small for making a sandwich. Um, okay, so yeah, we had some of those in the fridge and they were like kind of stale. So I just crumbled those up to put in the meatballs and onions and garlic and salt and pepper and put those in the oven. And then here I'm making my sauce and literally this was the best 
spaghetti I've ever made myself and one of the best spaghetti meals I've had in my life. Like, I'm not even kidding. This was so good. And I don't know what it was, like, just actually following a recipe for once or if it's, like, the, t the canned tomatoes that I used were just really good. Um, but this is the only spaghetti I'm ever going to make from now on, like, seriously. It's probably the tomatoes. Like, honestly, I feel like this was just a really good can of tomatoes. Let me know if you have any insight on this. <laughs> they were just whole tomatoes, and I just cut them with the scissors into the pan. Someone once asked me, like, why do you use scissors? Like, just use a knife. Look at this. You think I should take those tomatoes out of the sauce and slop that sauce all over the cutting board and cut them with a knife or do you think i should cut them with a knife into the pot no scissors worked so well for this so then i had some like chunks of tomatoes too with like the tomato sauce anyways i started to put the spaghetti into the oh well it's actually thin spaghetti just before anyone's like that's not spaghetti um it's called thin spaghetti apparently there's something between angel hair and spaghetti but anyways, I started putting the spaghetti into the sauce and then I realized, no, I should let it like sim simmer longer and soak into the meatballs and stuff. Um, so that's what happened there. And yeah, now I'm putting my noodles back in there. Maybe the ratio is a bit off of meatballs to sauce to spaghetti. But anyways, it was delicious. I made it work. I was going to fill it even more than that just because I wanted it to look like the show. But they have such a massive bowl of spaghetti that I was like... I just don't want to, okay? Because I can just put the rest that I don't finish as leftovers. But then, like, I don't want to put my saliva all over the whole spaghetti. Z Does that make any sense? I don't know. This was so good, though. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say mayonnaise. Why, well, yes! Nobody has guessed that. So later on in the show, our boys Marshall and Gary go to Marshall's mother's blood drive charity event ball thing. And there's some red velvet desserts there that Gary tries and they're like talking about them and his little Mr. Velvet guy and whatnot. So I made some vegan red velvet. Initially, I thought I was gonna have to make a cake and I was really dreading that because cakes scare me. Because on the table, there's like little mini cakes, like round cakes, and then there's cake slices. And I was like, how am I gonna make a bunch of mini cakes? Like I don't have a bunch of mini cake pans. I forgot that cupcakes existed. So, you know, eventually I realized that and I had the plan to make cupcakes. I was gonna cut off the top half of the cupcakes and we'll get back to that. But yeah, so red velvet, I've never made vegan red velvet before. It turned out really good. I was happy with it. I followed the recipe really well. I tried to, I, I um, used a scale and everything, okay. I thought I put this amount of red food coloring that they called for. I don't know if my food coloring was not potent enough or what, cause they didn't turn out as red as I hoped they would or maybe i put too much cocoa powder so and i also in the show the frosting on them is white and after i started mixing the frosting together of course it's yellow because it's buttercream and the butter is yellow but then i used a hack that i saw on a tiktok once which was to add purple food coloring to yellow frosting because purple and yellow are on opposite sides of the color wheel so that you can um cancel it, the yellow out and make it more white and it honestly worked i probably could have gone further and made it more perfect white but I got scared that it would turn lavender. But once I unwrapped the cupcakes, I realized that the outside is brown, of course, because anything you bake, it browns. Um, yeah, I didn't think about that because usually red velvet cake, you only see the inside, you know, or most cake because you frost the outside of it. And then when you cut inside, you see the cake color. You never see like the brown outside, you know? So I didn't think about how it wasn't gonna look red on the outside. Honestly, they didn't even look that red on the inside, but it's okay. It's not about that. They were delicious. I bought like a red um, sparkly frosting gel stuff from Target that turned out kind of fun. And um, yeah, I mostly just made cupcakes because I didn't want to waste food by just like cutting all the cupcakes in half. There's like no point, you know? So I just made one to replicate like what he had in the show. Also the ratio of frosting to cake is not right. So I liked the cupcakes, the full cupcakes, okay? But this was my one tiny cake to look like the show. And I drew the little blood droplet on it that kind of looked also like a vagine, but um, that's okay.
Who wants soup? Okay, so next I'm making dinner inspired by Farm World Finn and his family's soup and bread dinner. They talk about how it's a forever soup also known as a perpetual stew, also known as a hunter's pot, which might reveal something about the lore. I'm not gonna say, but anyways, um, I watched some videos on perpetual stew and stuff. Really interesting. It scares me a little bit. I mean, I would try someone else's perpetual stew that I trusted, but like, I'm not gonna put together, I'm not gonna like keep a pot simmering for days and stuff, especially not for this video that I wanted to finish as soon as I could. Um, so I'm just making a little stew, you know, they only show fins stew for like a second but it looks like there's some celery in there some carrots potato and some meat probably a beef kind of meat you know um but because obviously i'm vegan so i'm using mushrooms for like the meatiness and you know similar color as a meat but then i also used some peas in there the recipe that i'm using for inspiration which was just like a hearty beef stew called for frozen peas but to make it seem more like rural ish i used split peas dry split peas but i realized after making it that i probably should have soaked them the night before because even after cooking them for a long time in the soup they were still like crunchy i mean i still have more split peas so i'm gonna make it again see how that goes because i know that's how you usually make beans from scratch but i don't know because they were like split Peas. I thought you wouldn't have to do that. But anyways, highly recommend this soup. <laughs> I'll put all my recipes and inspiration in the description. I also tried to cut like the veggies and stuff kind of like chunky and like a bit um, imperfect looking. So it looked more like, you know, old timey, but all or like rural-ish feeling. What's the words that I can't come up with? someone help me with vocabulary because i'm trying to explain what i'm going for like an apocalyptic vibe you know a troubled time but also like not like you can't cut a perfect cube without like technology <laughs> why when i think of like a rustic stew from olden times i think it has the veggies have to be like cut in a certain way but it's like not like they couldn't cut a perfect cube back then it's not technology it's just like you know anyways this was delicious i loved it i love making soup i love that there's soup in this show but my bread on the other hand was did not come out how it was supposed to honestly i think a big part of it was that i used foil i i thought i had parchment paper i did not have parchment paper i thought i could get away with using foil um but i couldn't Unless it was something else, but I feel like it's the the foil because the dough seemed okay, you know, up until that point. Um, but anyways, a little embarrassing because it's a super easy recipe and it's supposed to be super easy. But the good thing is it was still entirely edible. Um, just very dense and very hard to cut. It had a very tough outer crust. Um, but when you dip it in the soup, it softens. It was good. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it was good. It just wasn't exact. It wasn't at all what it was supposed to be or look like. Um, and then the leftovers of it, I just like ripped it up into pieces and then mixed that into the leftover soup, like little dumplings. And that was even more delicious. So it's not really a fail if it still gets eaten, you know? Um, anyways, yeah, so. Well, maybe this will cheer you up. My latest prototype. Now it's still in development, so give me your honest feedback. Oh, oh, just needs the final touch. A raspberry buttercream scarf. Mmm, good. So obviously I had to make the pastry men chin. The pastry men. The biscuit boys. I call them... Uh... Pastry mention. Honestly, I think this is what made me have the idea to do like a food video based off of the show Because they're just so cute and like they make you want to make cookies, you know um, And I love how there's like the little chocolate boots on the bottom. That's so fun I don't know why I want to torture myself like this. This was kind of my big failure of the video <laughs> It's not really a failure. They were still delicious. Um, but yeah, you will get to it. You'll see I also had extra dark cocoa to use already um because in the show gary like emphasizes that it's like 
he uses like the best cocoa powder it's like super cocoa -y, you know so i was like i have extra dark cocoa powder i should make these yeah it's a combination of a lot of things again the parchment paper issue i'm no longer baking without parchment paper i understand that it's like a necessity now um if i didn't understand before i understand now i actually still have some dough in the freezer that because i didn't use all of it um because i got discouraged along the way so i can try to make these again maybe i'll do that um but it was fun you know i like the idea of the cocoa boots okay um that sounds like cocoa boots that's funny but it was really hard like they the boots would like fall off of the they would separate you know i made the cookies too thin i know that now but i i never make sugar cookies okay so next time you know and i'm so stupid because i would just like zone out and i cut one where it had cocoa pants that was on accident that wasn't me being funny i also made one that was like inverted colors um then i also like tried to make little marble cookies with the extra that i didn't feel like making more cookie boys with um and those turned out really good i thought they would be prettier but um, they were still good. So the first batch of cookies, the boys, I definitely overcooked them. I thought I was just waiting for them to get a little golden on the outside, you know, but that was too long. Also the no parchment paper issue, they were so stuck to the pan. And as I was trying to get them off, there was like no way to get them off without them falling apart. You know, I only had like two that were fully together, but the marble hearts that I made turned out delicious because I knew to cook them a little bit less and this experience made me realize that chocolate sugar cookies can be a thing. I don't know why I never thought of that, but like, they're so good. You can still decorate them, you know? I got, I don't know why we don't make chocolate sugar cookies. They were so delicious, especially with this extra dark cocoa. Um, so anyways, I was decorating my little guys. I got some, I don't know what this is called, the squeezy um frosting from the store because i'm not making a bunch of different frosting colors i'm sorry maybe another time and of course every time i went to the store they were out of black because it's halloween so i did buy this big black frosting it's like frosting you know the other ones are more like gel kind of um it didn't work looked really freakish um i tried to draw mouth and it, it wasn't happening so um it also looks kind of creepy but you know, it was fun. <laughs> this is my team. Huntress, our expert marksman and survivalist, and that's our munitions expert, Martin Mertens. And soup expert. So beans and cabbage. I was a little bit frightened for my life making this because I have a bit of gas problems in the tummy, you know? Uh, when it comes to cabbage and it's also like cabbage and beans. Also, this is a ton of cabbage in this soup Like do I regret it? I mean, I just wanted to make it accurate to the recipes that I saw online Which by the way, I thought beans and cabbage I thought they just like threw out some things in the show because they were like, oh, that's like apocalyptic You know, like cabbage is like a vegetable that you can keep longer than other vegetables it's like hearty and then like beans you have in cans you know so i thought it was just like they just beans and cabbage you know but when i was googling it i was like this is actually a thing there's a bunch of recipes and they're all like the same kind of vibe you know so this is like a thing that people make beans and cabbage soup and it was delicious um i want to cook with leeks more because that was fun i don't know i never have used leeks before i feel like um if i ever make this again i would replace like three quarters of the cabbage with other vegetables because yes it did kind of wreck me a little bit um not too bad but just like i don't want that I don't want that, you know, if I can avoid it, I would rather. Also, it called for a fresh thyme bundle, but I had a bunch of parsley and I wanted to use and I love parsley in soup. So I was like, I'm just going to do a parsley thing. I did put some dried thyme in it. Also, I doubled the beans because I was like, I just want anything else other, other than cabbage in this soup. Um, I also had a little bit of paprika because the soup in the show looked kind of like orange, you know. I don't think this is like what he was making in this show because his kind of looked like it was pinto beans or something like that. But I'm telling you, like every, I was gonna like freestyle it, but when I like just make a soup with beans and cabbage in it, but when I Googled it, there's like all these recipes that are like the same tried and true like formula of cabbage, beans, leeks, uh, 
white beans, you know, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it was delicious. So if you don't have any problems with cabbage, I would recommend. Um, but me personally, this is gonna have some alterations if I ever make it again. And that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Comment any other shows that I should make foods inspired by. Should I do a video loosely inspired by Adventure Time, the OG series? Was there anything in the Fiona and Cake show that I missed? Or anything that I could do better because, you know, bakers give me tips. I'll appreciate them. And thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment down below. Subscribe to me on Patreon if you want to, if you're feeling generous. Like, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and I have a Discord. And yeah, see you later. Awesome. I mean, you won't believe what I'm doing right now. Me and PB are getting matching tattoos. Hey, Simon. Well, trying to get tattoos. My skin keeps healing over. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so. <laughs>